Welcome back everyone. We're just on the road, right? We're going to see a fella called Steve. And he's got a Sierra Cosworth, but he's doing an engine conversion. But look at that. It's not just an engine conversion. He's putting a V6 Raptor engine in. He's also putting like PDK gearboxes in and it just sounds amazing. And he was like, come down Adam, have a look. So we're going to head down, have a look, have a bit snoop about and see what the crack is. Police reported ahead. We're here, we're here. Three door in there, can you see it? Hello Steve, you alright mate? Oh, it's nice down here. Crap up my way. Is it? The weather, right? How old's your son? 16. I bet he loves it down here, does he? Is it? It's, oh, it's funny, he didn't show any interest whatsoever and then when he left school we put him on an um, engineering type course at college. Like uh, mechanical engineering? Yeah, mechanical engineering. That's what I do, engineering. Is it? Yes, it's right. funny, that's, that's my trade as well. Is it? Mach like machining? Yeah, well I've been in it 30 odd years, right. you know, um, which is why we do what we do. But he, he didn't show any signs or interest at all and then wanted associated stuff like lathes, milling machine drills and mechanical hand fitting and what have you. He sort of got it, it all fell into place. Uh -huh. So he's been down here a couple of times and he's really interested in all the 3D scanning stuff and the computer software stuff. So uh, what's the story with your three door? Did you, I've seen it was a Moonstone one with a- It was a Moonstone. I think it was, the car was about, I don't know how old it was, but it got written off. So- Oh, so it wasn't your car originally then? No, no. Oh, right. I've had a 15 year, but it was written off. Yeah. Then from the, the research I've done, someone had a rally school. Yeah. And he bought a shell off Ford and bought the wreckage yeah. and built my car. Oh, right, okay. Uh, I've got his name and he's done, a pod, he's done an interview with someone. And I've reached out to the, the guy who built it and the guy who done yeah. the podcast, but none of them got back to us. Oh, right, okay. So I would really like to talk to him about yeah. it, just see what the crack was. Yeah. Because it is a Cosworth shell. Yeah. But obviously it has been reshelled re at some point, which, to be honest, it, it doesn't bother me. No. That, see, I would rather have a, a good, proper shell than a rusty, I totally fixed agree, up one. I totally agree with you. Now, you know, there's, there's lots of purists out there, um, and they're, <laughs> they're going to hate what I'm going to be doing to this, <laughs> you know. But, you know, I've, I owned a three door back in 1980. Oh God, when were it? Must have been 89-ish, 1990, something like that. So I've done the three door stuff. I then, I've done a SAF Cosworth as well. You've had a SAF, have I've you? I've done a SAF as well. Didn't like the SAF. Don't know why, it just wasn't me. I just, it's because I think I had such a teenage passion for a three door uh -huh. um, that I liked the three door. And uh, going back to the previous story about, you know, chipping the business and changing, I thought, what car did I really, really enjoy out of all the cars I've had? And it was a three-door Cosy. Three-door Cosy. One thing that, you know, we, we, myself and Jason both like, is doing like, like resto mod type stuff. I thought, well, why don't we do that to a three-door? Look at using, what would Ford use if they were building that car now? Don't think they'd use an old Pinto engine with a Cosworth <laughs> cylinder, would they? So. No, no, definitely not. Now, that's not to say there's nothing wrong with that. You all know, right. with a blisteringly quick engine back in 1986, 1987. Just look at the RS500s and 5600 horsepower. They were absolutely blisteringly quick for the time. But today, you can get a Fiesta and a Focus at over two, 300 horsepower now. So well, as well, aren't they? they're kind of dated, you know, and they, so the engine's dated, but that is why they're called Cosworth, you know. So I'm, I'm like really wrestling with the Cosworth name. I'm thinking, well, it isn't the Cosworth name that I like, it's the shape I like. Mm -hmm. So that's why I thought, well, I'll build, I'll build a shell, I'll build a car from a shell, but with a modern day powertrain. I thought, well, which engine do I put in? It was like, well, I know that the, the old five cylinder Ford Volvo engine that used to be in the uh, Mark Fiesta 1. STs yeah, that. that's that. And we did some work for a guy um, a while back, putting a PDK on the back of one of those engines for another project. And I thought, well, that's a nice engine. And then I thought, there's now a four cylinder version of the EcoBoost that they put in the Mustang and all those types of things. And then Penny dropped, I thought, well, why don't you just use a three and a half litre V6 out of the Ford Raptor, the F-150 Raptor. Now they come in Gen 1 and Gen 2 version, but the Gen 2 version, which came out in 2017, I think it was, 2018. That thing's 500 horsepower, 550 foot pound of torque, twin turbo, so it's got that turbo lineage back to the original car. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, nobody's ever done that. No. So I thought, well, why not go for one of them? So that was it, the seed was set for the engine. Got the gearbox, but 
the Is gearbox. It a Porsche gearbox? Did yeah, that was the original concept to put the transaxle in, but put the, because it's a transaxle, to put it in the rear axle. Uh -huh. Right, because. What do you mean by transaxle? It's, like the gearbox um, is in the back axle. Yeah, it's got the differential all built into the uh, into the gearbox, so it's a diff. And uh, I'll, I'll show you a transaxle through here. Yeah, from the camera. Yeah. Well, I like your team, Van Mind. <laughs> yeah. So this this is what we call a, a typical transaxle, and this is this is Porsche 996 Turbo one. But as you can see, that's the input shaft. Well, there's the output shafts here, so right. st stick that into gear. So that's basically the diff. But obviously in the cosy, the diff's in the rear axle. Uh -huh. It's a longitudinal gearbox that then has a prop shaft driving the rear axle. So the PDK is like this, but a seven-speed flappy paddle type. To get them, they're a much bigger, they're a much bigger unit. So I thought, well, I can either put them in the rear in the rear axle and build a subframe and all the rest of it. Then I thought, well, the only other gearbox that Porsche made was a uh, and a longitudinal type was the Panamera. And that thing there is a Panamera PDK. So I bought that just from photographs, never seen one before. And when it arrived, it was like, Jesus, Pluto's arrived. Look uh, at the size of size it, you know. It's massive. And I'm thinking, that thing's never going to Cosworth Tunnel. So where's, right. So that will go in the tunnel, then this will go where the diff is. Yeah, that would be in the back. Cause it, the 996 Porsches, the rear engine, obviously, uh -huh. so the, the engine and gearbox is in the back of the car. So what would you do with this overhang bit? Is there space between? Yeah, well, the, the PDK is a little bit shorter, so you'd probably get it in, but I'd have to take the fuel tank out and I'd have to change the spare wheel well. Uh -huh. I didn't want to do that with the shell that I've got. We'll come on to the shell later. So I thought, well, the next option then is to look for a longitudinal Porsche gearbox that, that can use all this control code that we've already developed. So I thought, well, the only one is the Panamera box, but like I say, this thing, Jesus, it needs two of you to lift it, you know? We put it in the up into the tunnel and it must have stuck out the bottom of the car four inches. And I thought, that ain't gonna end well, you know? That's, that's just gonna be a problem child all the way along. So the next option was to look at a different type of gearbox, which was still seven speed PD, um, no, seven speed flappy paddle. And the one that I came across was the, the one that BMW use in the M3 V8 cars and the Z4, all those types of things. Much smaller gearbox. Problem with that is I don't have the control code to control that gearbox, so that's all still got to be worked out. But nevertheless, it's all doable. So we've got the gearbox, we've got the engine, we've got the chassis. All it is now is trying to get that powertrain, as I call it, coupled together mechanically, uh -huh. and then so set into the chassis to get the right pitch in, the right angle, longitudinally right, transversely right. And that's where that car currently is now. It's all suspended on that big red beam, but that's so that I can get all the engine mounts made to support it. If again, if you look at the, um, the blog that I'm writing about building this, you can see all the problems I'm hitting. But these are problems that you know you're gonna have when you do this type of work. Uh, well, it's never it's gonna never, be easy, is never it? Gonna de it was never designed to do this. But I've got a solution now, it's all in my head and in 3D software and all the rest of it. It's just a case of now is I can move on to other bits now that I know that that can be fixed. So that's, uh, that's the plan with that. But that, that engine, it'll be a brute of an engine. It'd be amazing. So the shape was a three door originally, but then I'm like, mm. RS500 3D. This is the RS500 bump, isn't it? Yeah, well, the car, this this car that I'm building the engine in is, I had to have a car to develop the powertrain in. Mm -hmm. So the, what's the best car to develop powertrain is the car you intend to build. Uh -huh. So I, I bought that car just to develop the powertrain in. What I do with that car yet, I still don't know because the engine's there looking, gearbox is still down there. You were saying it's not like an original, it's not like an original car, it's not... No, that's not a perfect car, is it? No, it's no, that's right. It's, a, it's an original three-door, cosy, but it had done 130-odd thousand uh, miles. It's had some work done to the uh, chassis. You know that if you started unpicking that, there'd be lots more problems. Uh, to a point where I thought, well, it's kind of coming to the end of its life without a significant restoration required. Mm -hmm. So it will do exactly what I want it to do. And then what I could do, then all the bits that are on that, that are really difficult to find now, hard to find parts, is I can take them off and use them on the shell that I've bought. Brand new shell. I've got a brand new shell as well. So... Can we have a look at it? Absolutely, yeah, no problem. Did you get this from Paul, did you? Yeah, I did, I? He's got everything Paul mind, hasn't he? He is um, a very nice chap, shall we say. Ah, he is. Yeah. He's... So... Is this Ultima? They're all bits of ultimate bodywork, yeah. So this is, um, yeah, brand new, never been touched. Never, but absolutely brand spanking brand new. Brand spanking new. It's got a few RS500 bits just sat in there as well, rear spoilers. And Original rear spoiler? Mm. Did you never think of going like fiberglass or anything, just no. to keep the weight or anything down? No, 
No, it's got to be original. Uh -huh. Like I say, all the hard to find parts, I could use the test mule or the development mule, as I call it, to swap the parts over into this, into this car. But if the parts that come off that car aren't good enough, then they'll either have to be refurbished or have to find either NOS parts or, or remake them or something. Uh -huh. It's going to be built into a, an RS500 looking car, uh -huh. but it won't be an RS500, it'll be a RSR500. Raptor, which is the Raptors from the, the Raptor engine. The 500, because it'd be 500 horsepower, not 500 cars. And RSR are just like RSR, you know. Will you have like creature comforts in it? Like, I mean, like. Yeah, I won't put a standard loom in it, for example, a harness in, because a 1987 harness, all the wires get brittle, they always break. Again, going back to the reliability thing, is I'll probably build my own harness to put in this. I'll probably change the headlights to LED. It'll have traction control because that's the engine software that we, we can use. But the dash, for example, we use digital displays right. um, on some of the cars that we've done in the past. A company that we've used before is a company called Plex, P-L-E-X, from Greece. So I need to talk to the guys there, but what I'm trying to do is get two of their screens together um, in a bezel that looks exactly like the standard three-door bezel. Mm -hmm. But the clocks will be digital, not analog. So they'll look the same, but they'll actually be digital. Now people say, well, why bother? Well, why put a V6 engine in a uh, car? Yeah, you know? yeah. It's, it's just, that's just the type of thing. Uh, I can understand why, I totally, you know? totally understand why you do it. I can. And it'll have other things in there, you know. I won't try and find a perfect interior for it because there won't be one out there, unless anybody's got one. Uh, <laughs> um, but I'll put brand new Recaros in, which are the same shape as the original three-door ones. So yeah. you're going to, are you going to build it to like to use on track or like to take your ass away for a weekend or <laughs> kind of a bit of everything? No, it's, it'll be a road car. Road car, yeah. so you might have a bit of air con and uh, yeah, yeah, have air con and stuff and, like that. Yeah, cli we'll probably have climate control because one of the options is just to pull like a Mustang, a uh, brand new Mustang's got all of those creature comforts in. Mm -hmm. So you just pull all that body control module and body control harness and that just pull that out of the Mustang and just transplant it into this. And you just, all you're doing then is you're changing the ends to fit the certain lights and stuff. So this, Amazing. the plan is to... Uh, Amazing, honestly it is. <coughs> how, long, how long do you think it'll take to get? Well, that's, that's why I bought that development mule because the original thought would be to do all that engine development in this chassis. But the thing is, this will take me two years to get road legal, you know? Uh -huh. Whereas that's road legal now. Uh -huh. So I can get the engine done get it all developed, then start doing this. So um, that's the plan. So I'm hoping to get that one probably up and running in the next, realistically, two to three months, I think. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, Can we have a look at that while we're here? Yeah, sure. You know, like I say, the mechanical aspect of um, building cars is relatively straightforward. It's the details in the electronics and the control. But, you know, as you see, it's just a, just a bone stock three door that I've, you know, I've started pulling apart. The seats aren't bad, though, are they? No, they're not bad at all. I reckon that you could probably salvage the So would you just keep out. the seats? I might do, yeah. I might maybe just put some bolsters in. And I drove it home from Surrey when I, had, when I actually bought it, and I was probably sitting on the floor by the time I'd got home. Cause it's, <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest, when I drove it back, it just put me back 30 years. And I was driving back fears. on, um, it was a Friday afternoon, and Steve Wright were on BBC Two playing all the old old tunes as well. <laughs> so everyone still going by. They're all everybody. I was stuck on the M25, and everybody were giving it all the thumbs up. And I thought, this is just nostalgic. Uh, this is absolutely superb. You know, you think I've definitely done the right thing. Uh, they do get loads of attention, it. don't they? Absolutely that? loved it. Yeah. But yeah, you see, I guess, I guess at the end of the day, it's just about having a bit of fun with it all as well. Uh -huh. Because like I say, you know, building cars for a living, it's 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 interesting, but they're never yours. You know, so for me, it's. Um, this is something for me for a change. For the wheels, you're not putting, you, you design your own, aren't you? They look like standard three door yeah. wheels, but slightly bigger. Did yeah. you say they were going to be 16s? No, they're going to be 17 inch. inch. Um, but again, you know, why did Ford put 15 inch wheels on the car in 1986, 87? It's uh, because that's like the casting technology back then, uh -huh. limited to them to a certain size. Could be a business as well, mind selling them wheels once you've got them done in seven well, days. I've got to, again, I don't crow before I can show. So. <laughs> but um, I think that was one thing that I was, if I was going to change, it would be the wheels because they looked brilliant back in eight in the 80s, uh -huh. but now they just look like little skateboard wheels, you know, 15 inch wheels. Do you think you give them a little bit more dish? No, what I've tried to do is they'll be standard offset, so they'll be 40 mil offset, but it's just a case of taking that that three door original wheel and just upscaling, upscaling it to it. 17. Again, what I did was, uh, it was Paul who I borrowed a wheel from because I didn't have this car at the time. I scanned with a Faro arm, I scanned 
an original wheel just to get a cross section through it. And then I drew the profile through the, the using the uh, point cloud data. And then basically you can revolve that profile around an axis and then it builds you the, the wheel. The outer band had to be proportional to the, um, the outside spoke detail, to the inside spoke detail. But I was really conscious of keeping the centre cap I the same size as well. Cap. So we use forged, forged material, heat treated, um, it's also gone through what we call an FEA analysis, which is finite element analysis, which shows how strong they are. And they do like impact tests and squash tests and that. So, you know, the last thing I want is a wheel coming apart. It's just not, right. not the way you go about things. So they do impact tests for like hitting curbs and they are hitting potholes and Pot things. Right. So, and again, because it's a forged material that's heat treated, it won't shatter. It'll probably just bend, you know, whereas a cast wheel had a tendency for cracking and cracking. this and the other. If I was going to supply wheels to anybody, if they wanted some, you know, I'd be more than comfortable in saying they're absolutely fine, it's you know. Perfect for work, that. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, they're, so they'll be 17, but they'll be standard width. They aren't going any wider. So you'll probably get two... What well, width are the standard? Sevens. Seven inch? Yeah. So it'd be a 205 or 215 max, I would have thought you'd get on them. You could probably get a seven and a half inch rim on the back without cutting the arches. Uh -huh. And maybe not on the front, but if somebody wanted eight inch wide wheels of that design and they've already got a car with cut arches, you could maybe look at making them. You know, again, right. it's, all, it's all in software, so it's, it's really easy to do. So yeah, so I'm just in the process Amazing. now of uh, just finalising the di design and then we'll be getting them made. So, But I need the wheels on the car to start with because it changes the ratios and things like that for when we're doing the engine calibration. This is the old Ford harness. The old Ford loom, eh? And I, I don't like touching it because it's absolutely <laughs> covered in 30 years of grime. Aye. But you can just see, look here, look how all the insulation's Aye. cracked. Look, look take that. my loom. And that's the main, one of the main power leads. Aye. So I you, should really replace my loom, but it just looks like yeah. that much of a big job. Yeah, it is, yeah. But you just think, well, if that's like that, the rest of the car must be like that as well. Aye. Right, thanks for watching, fellas. Thanks to Steve for taking his time to show us around. I hope you're not in trouble off you. We'll have to spend too much time <laughs> with us. But sure. uh, I'll leave a link to all Steve's social media. He's got a Facebook page for the Sierra, haven't you, Steve? I have, yeah. Uh, yeah. One for his business, Auto Bionics. Uh, have you got any other Facebook pages or anything? Your no, website? there's there's, uh, there's the website for the business, and then there's obviously a blog for this this car build. So if anybody's interested, in, you know, drop onto that. And uh, is that a website blog? No, it's Facebook. It's Facebook. a Facebook blog, yeah. So right. um, and it's kind of all the the things I'm finding and the problems I'm finding. How we're going to get over them, you know, all for right. building this. You might be able to help them if you join the page. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Any help. But thanks, yeah. Dave. No, you're thanks welcome. for watching, and I'll see you soon. Cheers. Spot on, mate. Spot yeah. on. Thanks, Adam. Really appreciate that. Hey, boy. Well, uh, thanks for having us down. No, you come, you come down. I hope it's been interesting for you. It has, really has. Yeah.